This video is brought to you by 3, bringing you 4G at no extra cost and some exclusive deals over at btech.com. Hey guys, welcome to BTech. It is Basil here talking you through the camera UIs on five of the hottest phones in the world. The iPhone 5S, the Sony Xperia Z2, the Samsung Galaxy S5, the HTC One MA, and the Nokia Lumia 1020. Camera UIs are really underappreciated because they are the thing that you enjoy before you actually get to enjoy the picture that you're taking. They're all important in helping you capture the right picture. So we're gonna start off by talking about the iPhone. The iPhone 5S sports an 8 megapixel rear facing camera. It also houses a true tone LED flash, one warm, one cool, so that you can get the best color accuracy possible. If we were to lock the phone, we can see, we can very quickly open the camera by swiping up. We can, once we do swipe all the way, take a picture, very quick to take that picture. And we can see we've also got a really quick navigation around that picture. The user interface itself is incredibly simple. On the left hand side, you've got a toggle for front facing camera, HDR toggle as well, on or off. HDR, by the way, high dynamic range is all about giving you increased tonal range by taking three shots, one overexposed, one underexposed and squishing them together. You've also got flash settings, and filter settings on the right hand side. That's really the extent of the photo settings, except for the fact you can take square pictures for Instagram and you can take a panorama, amongst the best panorama in the world. Video shot full HD resolution and slow motion video at 120 frames per second and that really is the extent of it. So Apple definitely wins out on simplicity and getting good results nine times out of 10. The Sony Xperia Z2, Sony's latest flagship, packs a sensor and lens combination that we've seen before. Its 20.7 megapixel sensor was on the Sony Xperia Z1 and Z1 Compact, but this actually does take better pictures. We've had a really enjoyable time with it so far um, and the actual experience of shooting is helped no end by the fact you've got a physical camera key on here. From the phone being off you can actually press the camera button and take a picture, shake your hand and whatnot and you've still got a really decent picture, quick to focus and good quality as well. It shoots by default in superior auto mode. Now superior auto mode is going to make all the decisions for you. A lot of people don't really like this mode based on the fact it didn't used to be so hot. Now Sony has improved it no end. It also boots things into HDR automatically um, which is really nice like the iPhone. You've got flash controls, toggle for front facing camera and some options to tweak aspect ratio, self timer, smile shutter, etc. but nothing that's really gonna affect picture quality here. If we jump out of that, we can also see a manual control which allows us to um, control our scene, white balance, exposure, which is brightness, flash once again, and you can jump into the settings to change your resolution to have it up to 20, 0.7 megapixels or thereabouts, there you go. The reason it doesn't take 20.7 megapixels by default in Superior Auto is because it does something called oversampling, getting loads of pixels, squishing them into a smaller, more color accurate pixel. You've also got focus mode control as well as HDR toggle um, and an image stabilizer and you can even change metering, which is how the phone decides how bright or dark your picture should be. Jumping out of that, you've also got 4K video, time shift video, background defocus. If we pop open background defocus, we can tap on a part of the screen. It's gonna take multiple shots at various focal ranges. And it should, based on that, allow you to blur or unblur your background. You can choose between three types of blurs. You've got linear blur, horizontal, vertical linear blur, and radial blur. So um, that will give you a nice amount of effect on there, but you can see if we pull up right up close, just above um, Pedro's shoulder right there, it's not actually perfect, unfortunately. Um, so it isn't the best um, in terms of accuracy for this, but it's still very, very good. And you can download more of these applications through the app, camera app itself. There are also more fun shooting modes on here than on any other device out there, such as AR effects. And um, you can even get a Spider-Man AR effect. This is gonna be perfect if you've got kids. It's gonna overlay an entire scene on top of your devices, or in my devices in this case, and you can go right in so you can have your friends immersed amongst the dinosaurs, fairies, or whatever you want. 
jumping once more into the gallery, into the camera mode, sorry. You can also see creative effects, info, eye, social, life, time shift, bus. So there are a whole load of things that you can tinker with. But the long and short, it makes for a very good automatic camera and has something else for you to get a little bit geekier with as well. The S5 packs a 16 megapixel rear facing camera and a very bright flash. The camera can be opened through the application naturally or via the lock screen. If we unlock the phone, we can just swipe up, open into the camera and take the picture. Quick to take a picture. We can have a look at that picture and you can see decent quality throughout. Popping out though, we can take a look at the user interface. On the right hand side, you've got quick uh, video recording photo. You can also change your shooting mode. We'll come on to those later. On the left side, you can see our quick shortcuts. Long press on one of these and it opens up a menu in the right hand side of it. Um, this is pretty extensive and we really like how Samsung allows you to customize your shooting experience so, so much. You can even do things like overlay um, grid lines, um, set a timer, control HDR, by flicking it into the left hand corner and enable things like selective focus which is exactly what we just used on the Samsung on the Sony Xperia Z2 so if we were to let's get that into frame for you hold that picture steady processing that picture um, oh it was unable to apply selective focus let's try that one more time we have to be at least 50 meter, 50 centimeters away from the subject There you go, that should have worked. And you can see, if we tap through on selective focus, we can have near focus, which blurs out the background. It is slightly blurred. We can have far focus, which keeps the background nice and sharp and blurs out the foreground. And we can have pan focus, which keeps everything nice and sharp. Not as extreme or as customizable as Sony's, but it is nice to have. Um, generally though, neither of these really stack up to the HTC One's application of that, and we'll come on to that later. As far as other shooting modes on here go, you've got Beauty Face, Shot and More, Panorama, Virtual Tour, Dual Camera. Beauty Face softens faces, Panorama takes Panorama Shot, Virtual Tour gives you, um, uses a gyroscope so you can actually get a virtual tour of a house, perfect for estate agents or the like. You've also got Dual Camera, which over lays a rear uh, front facing camera picture over your rear facing camera picture. Shot and more is the interesting one though. This is almost identical to Nokia's smart camera, for example. If we were to take a picture of Pedro, but get Pedro on his feet and take a picture. Like so. It should hopefully, no, it hasn't done it because we are moving the camera too much. We have to keep the camera really still for that to work. But what it could potentially do is give you best face in which um, if it does see faces, it lets you change just the face without changing the shot um, of a person. You've got Drama Shot, which has multiple instances of the same person moving across the screen. You've also got Eraser, which allows you to rub out certain parts of the shot. And Panning Shot, which would have had Pedro's legs on here, this end, and a blurry shot in the background. But the one that it actually got was Best Photo. So it would allow us to take from choose from a series of photos and pick the best one based on clarity and which um, what we want the shot to look like. So we can discard that. Um, all in all, our opinion of the S5 camera um, user experience is it's nice and customizable, though the additional modes don't really add as much value as perhaps we might have liked. But absolutely love the customizability and this menu to the left hand side. Putting that down and we can move on to the HTC One. Undoubtedly the most exciting camera phone based on innovation of the bunch is the HT1 because it's got dual cameras. One that gains perspective information, one that takes the actual picture. You've also got a dual flash, one warm, one cool for very accurate color um, when you do use a flash. You can open up the camera by tapping the camera app icon or flipping the phone into portrait actually if we flip the phone into landscape even and press the volume button and then we can actually take the shot by pressing the volume button if we open up that shot we can again see it's decent quality and jumping out of that we can also see we were in HDR right there so if we were to jump into auto it would have probably fired up a little bit quicker we can just try that yeah that takes pretty much instantaneously so it's a really really nice quick shooting experience 
As far as the key camera UI elements go on the right hand side shortcut to the gallery, you can take your picture. Um, you can also access some additional shooting modes. Um, you can see camera, video, Zoe camera, selfie, dual capture and pan 360. Zoe camera takes photo and video um, information in. Dual camera does what it does on other devices, overlays your rear facing camera picture with front facing camera picture. And pan 360 obviously is the standard um, Android Panorama 360. As far as outdoor macro and HDR goes, <clears throat> these are um, actual shooting modes that we've created ourselves and saved as additional cameras, which is really a hot hot feature of this phone on the left hand side of the screen is where you can see your flash toggle and you've also got additional shooting modes um, this where it says auto allows you to change your shooting mode in auto you can still control things like iso exposure white balance you can apply creative filters and these are pretty extensive and change a whole bunch of settings, including uh, change what the volumes bu volume button does, change burst mode, um, geotagging, not to mention save whatever setup you have as an all new camera. As far as the manual shooting mode goes, this is probably the thing that excited us the most. You can control your white balance, you can control your ISO exposure, you can control your shutter speed and even control your um, focus. So we've got it set to the a macro, the closest focal range in terms of macro that the camera supports. We can actually lay it right up close to our Galaxy S5 and take a picture. Taking that picture we can see really nice decent clarity right there and nice blurry background so perfect taking full advantage of that nice wide open aperture of the lens. Now it isn't that simple because of those dual cameras you can actually do a whole bunch of other stuff as well. If we were to take a picture of Pedro for example like so that might not work because it was a bit too close doesn't always work with macro we can press the edit button we can do something called unfocus, so that blurs out the background. We can refocus on the background. Yeah, it probably won't work on a macro shot, but maybe it'll work with a 3D mode. Yeah, so how cool is that? Pedro looks 3D. If we want to change that so we don't flip the camera, we have some 3D information, additional perspective information that gives us a 3D element to Pedro. If we were to take that picture again, but take it like we took it of the others. This isn't in any shooting mode, by the way. This is just a regular, regular picture. This should enable us to do our background defocus a little bit um, better. You can firstly see that it took no time to take this picture. And how blurred is that background? Again, really nice and cool. You can click on the part that you actually want in focus. So we're clicking on Pedro right now. Jump out of that. You can also do things like do something called foregrounder, which scribbles out the background. Zoom blur, so it looks like Pedro is flying through space. Cartoon, which will get the background looking a little bit cartoony and colorized. So Pedro is colored and the background is not. So that's what the dual camera enables. It prevents you having to take multiple shots to prevent all that annoying processing time. Um, and all in all makes the actual After Effects um, experience on here better. The actual camera is very decent too, although the actual resolution is lower than the rest. So it won't be as hot for detail. That brings us on to our final camera, the Nokia Lumia. 1020. Lumia 1020 is our camera phone king. The Xenon flash as well as the dual camera button, not to mention that 41 megapixel sensor just brings everything together to make for a very decent shooting experience. You can activate the camera by pressing the camera application or you can just long press that flash. Once we long press it from the lock screen, you can see we're ready to take a photo and we take it. It does take a little bit longer than a lot of other camera phones that are slower, but that's because it's got a dual core processor in there as opposed to quad core processor. Um, if we were to take a look at the UI, we can see, whoops, excuse that in the background, on the left hand side while it's a lock screen now that accesses the gallery on the right hand side you've got access to video shooting you've also got access to picture taking and nokia smart sequence this is what we were talking about earlier for the samsung galaxy s5 so let's see if nokia can nail what we were trying to do with the samsung and put pedro right back down where he belongs and take a look at that picture we'll need to just jump 
out of frame so that we can unlock the phone. So we've got best shot, that's one option. If we swipe across, we've got action shot, that's another option. So we can see it's actually done it on the Lumia. We've got motion focus, so it kept Pedro still in the middle and blurred out the background. And they're all the ones that it was able to take. But we do have changing faces and remove moving objects as well. So Pedro is completely out of frame here. Really decent that Nokia was able to pull this off. So it already implies that this performs slightly better on the Lumia, probably partly thanks to the optical image stabilization than on the Samsung Galaxy S5. If we are to take a look at the Nokia smart camera, or Nokia camera mode, sorry, we can swipe out to activate a series of rings. These enable manual controls in the most intuitive way we've ever seen manual controls enabled. If we pull up the focus, for example, we can actually change our focal range and control white balance ISO and shutter speed in exactly the same way, not to mention exposure compensation. You can also tweak the flash up top here and we can jump into the settings to change lenses, switch to the front-facing camera. Lenses, by the way, are applications that you can download to complement your picture. The taking experience, as with the Sony phone and Samsung, you can also control bracketing, jump into settings, where you can even shoot in RAW, which is hugely, hugely impressive. Jumping out of that, we can also reframe our shot once we've taken it. So we want to pull right and close to Pedro there. Okay, take the picture. Decent picture. Like we said, optical image stabilizer is gonna perform very well at night, but we're not quite happy with the framing of that. Just tap through on the cropping tool and we can actually reframe zooming out after we've taken our picture. So really amazing to have that kind of ability. And you can even go so far as to rotate your shot. We think that's much more on point, save that and Pedro looks decent. The last thing to do with the Lumia 1020 is open up our camera application and the lenses app and click Nokia Refocus. So this is basically gonna do what the other devices did, blur out the background, sharpen the foreground. Hopefully, that's the intention. We found this hasn't worked quite so well as on the HTC One, Sony Xperia Z2 and Samsung Galaxy S5, but if we take a look, we can see exactly what we can expect. Firstly, it takes a while. That's the first thing we notice. We can tap through to keep everything in focus or just have a certain part in focus. Bringing it closer into frame and you can probably make out it's not really doing all that much. Sure, it's blurring the background and foreground slightly, but it's such a subtle effect that while it might look more realistic, it might not actually be as pleasing to a lot of people out there. You can do something called color pop though, which keeps specific colors in um, check. So for example, we could just have the red nose lit up and that looks quite fun, I guess. But ultimately the best um, background defocus award goes to the HTC One and Sony Xperia Z2 and Samsung Galaxy S5 comes second. And unfortunately, despite having probably the best optics on here and best camera, the background defocus app just isn't as good. With any luck, now you know exactly how these camera user interfaces differ and which might be right for you. If you've got any questions about any of the phones, ping them in the comments section below. I've been Basil with BTech. Make sure if you enjoyed the video, you click like. If you like our channel in general, subscribe. Head over to btech.com. Over there, you can find the latest in smartphones, tablets, smart gadgets, and some awesome deals as well. At the top of the screen is where you can find three hand-picked videos for your viewing pleasure. On the left is where you can subscribe and on the right hand side you can find some exclusive deals if you head over to btext.com.